Well guys, you can see the cows are back there. <clears throat> they were out eating away. Uh, it is Saturday and it is about, I don't know, a balmy 15 degrees right now. Beautiful out. Uh, pretty much, pretty still. Not really much of a breeze. Uh, some people made some comments about me cutting trees down and how I block them all up and then I go dig the snow out of the, or go dig the blocks of wood out of the snow. <clears throat> well, they'll be happy to know that today I just hauled six loads out with the gator. Uh, there's still plenty more up there that needs to be hauled out, but being it's such a beautiful day out today, that's what I did. Um, I don't know if you can tell my hand's turning purple. It's not that warm out, but it's a good day to work outside and you won't sweat too much. Uh, like I say, pretty much calm. Uh, beautiful out. But anyways, that's not what this video is about. Uh, this video is... There's a request for this video, or a couple requests for this video, so... I'm going to, uh appease you guys <clears throat> that requested this video get to it right now I'll go back in the shop where it's a little bit warmer uh, as you can see in here maybe you can see about 46 degrees uh, I'm gonna turn down the Badgers game so we don't have to hear that um, but I had a video request or a couple requests for a video on the gator. Um, so here it is. This is a 2005 Gator HPX 4x4. Um, I bought it. It had 500 hours on it. <clears throat> I bought it last summer. Or last spring, um, I had been borrowing a Kubota RTV 900 from a buddy of mine for about two years. Basically, what it was is I took care of it for him, and then when they needed it for pulling the pulling tractor around, so on pulling nights, <clears throat> he would get it and they would use it and then bring it back here. And basically I just took care of it for using it. Uh, when he brought it here, it had a few issues I fixed. So it was a great machine, but since they went full-blown NTPA, the pull, that Gator is now out in um, Ohio. So I don't have the Kubota anymore, so I had to find something. And this is what I bought. Uh, I don't remember how much I give for it. It was enough, I know that, but it's the handiest, the handiest thing around the farm besides the skid loader. Uh, between the two of them, it's what does most of the work around here. Um, but it is, as you can see, it's it gets used. Uh, I don't know how many hours I have on it now. Like I say, I bought it with 500, and now it has. Almost 875 hours. So it gets used pretty much every day. Um, it has, I'm going to have to set you guys down so I can lift the box. It does not have a hydraulic box, which I wish it did. One thing I really miss from the Kubota, the Kubota, everything was hydraulic, obviously, and the Kubota was a diesel. This is a gas and it has the two cylinder Cowie engine in it. Uh, I think it's like 18 horse, something like that. Um, liquid cooled, all that good stuff. But it is four wheel drive, has a locking rear diff, has, you know, here's your lever for four wheel drive right there. Pretty straightforward, simple. And High, low, reverse, locking diff right there, park and brake, all that good stuff. Um, it's a pretty basic machine. And when I was looking at buying one, I was comparing between this and... I can't remember if it was like a 620i or exactly what it was. Um, 
but I did not go with the other model because I did not want the independent front suspension or rear suspension. <clears throat> As you can see, this one here has a solid rear end. Uh, I'm a firm believer in solid rear end and anything that uh, is a work machine, and this is a work machine. This is not really just a go for a trail ride type of thing. And as you can see, my left tire needs a little bit more air in it. Um, but anyways, the reason I do not like independent rear suspension is because if you go and put weight on that hitch, the whole thing squats in the middle. Granted, it does put more weight on the tires, but there's more give in the center. Where with this one, when you put weight on that hitch, it's pushing down on the whole axle onto the rear tires. That's my whole reasoning for why I wanted a a full solid rear axle. I did not want independent rear suspension. Um, and I do not know how much it holds on fuel, like probably four or five gallons it holds enough. Um, and underneath the hood here has storage cubbies. Um, as you can see, there's a radiator, there's the brake fluid, there's a radiator, the reserve for the radiator overflow. Um, yeah, it's a basic work machine. Um, I wish I had a full brush guard in the front like the Kubota had. Um, like I say, it's a work machine, and I don't baby it. It gets piss pounded. Um, pardon my language, but it gets the crap beat out of it. Uh, it goes through the brush, and I really wish I had a full brush guard in the front because the front end sees plenty of brush. And it does have where I could bolt on a receiver on the front. Uh, would be nice, especially for, I have a winch that goes on my four-wheeler, which I don't use anymore since I bought this. Actually, it started one time last summer. It has not started all this summer, and I should start that one of these days with the batteries completely dead. Um, but I have a winch. It'd be nice to mount on a plate for the front. But I've never really... I've got it stuck a few times, but normally that's getting hung up on stumps. And normally I can get it off the stump by myself. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But I can't screw around here making all kinds of noises. But otherwise, it's just a pace, pretty basic machine. Uh, there's your glove box, and as you can see, I always got my fencing pliers, my tensioner, adjuster, draw pin wire tester or voltage tester got some jumper leads in there it's basically uh, last summer as I've mentioned I rotated my cows every day I moved them every day to a new uh, section of pasture and this year I just moved them between the three big pastures once a week um, so I was carrying a lot of fencing stuff with it and I do intend to go back to daily moves this year don't know what's gonna happen but uh, time will tell and that's what it is. Nothing fancy, but it's a heck of a workhorse. Um, the only thing I dislike about it is it's carbureted. It's not fuel injected. But then, on another note, I prefer that over having anything that's computer that's going to give me grief down the road. Um, I wish it was a diesel. That's really the only thing I wish. I wish it was a diesel because it is cold-blooded. And even after it's warm, it, it doesn't always like to run right. I mean, it, I don't know. It's just, it's a gas carbureted thing. Um, it's with fours, everything. You think you got the idle set right, and then the next minute they're idling too high or they're idling too low or whatever. That's the only thing I can't stand. I love diesel compared to gas. But otherwise, it's a damn good machine. Uh, I'd recommend one to anyone that has a farm or a ranch. I mean, jump on there, throw your stuff in the back, and go to work. Um, for me, yeah, I'm a small farm, and this is the perfect size machine for around here. I can, I can get a pickup truck around, but I can't get a pickup truck a lot of places I take this thing. So, it's handy for that. And, you know, a guy could have a four-wheeler, but four-wheelers don't have a nice big box like that on the back. And, you sure, on a four-wheeler, you can have somebody ride with you that's sitting behind you this they can sit, sit right next to you and go out and show cattle or whatever and uh, I love it for that um, some days it'd be nice to have an enclosed cab some days it'd be nice just to have a roof 
but anyways that's what it is uh, I guess I don't really know what else to say about it other than I, I love it it's a dang good machine I like the Kubota better uh, some parts of the Kubota I like better some parts I like better about this um, with the Kubota you really never need to need the brake pedal because it's hydrostatic for the most part um, where this thing will freewheel which I prefer the freewheeling over the hydrostatic but um, yeah anyways this is just uh, I guess a really quick overview of the 2005 Gator HPX 4x4 um, I guess if anybody has any other questions or whatever <clears throat> leave me a comment and I'll try and answer but I don't know I don't really know what else to say about it other than I love it it's a great machine I hope it lasts many many years because I don't know looking at all the new ones I don't know what I'd want to replace it with uh, all the new ones that I've seen so far have a box about her bed about half the size of this one and when I cut my firewood my firewood is basically almost hanging off the tailgate and on here grab the tape measure he is we'll go from outside to outside 51 inches so take two inches off because the bed rails an inch wide take two inches off he's all 48 inches on the inside here we'll go like this put him up on the outside it's almost 49 inches so he's 49 wide and the tape measure here that's butted up to the front so to the back of the bed is 44 and the back of the tailgate is almost it's 54 and a half and I usually cut my logs they're almost hanging off the back so I cut them about four foot long or a little better four four and a half foot uh, everything else I've looked at it looks like the bed stops about right here and that's a lot of bed in the back that you don't have available anymore by the time you drop the tailgate it barely be back to this hole so you got all that back that you know you don't have on one of them other ones so that's a lot of why I went with this model um, the 620i that I was looking at I'm pretty sure that was the model was basically the same identical machine but had independent rear suspension and I can't remember if it was fuel injected or if it still had a carburetor on or not but pretty much any of the new ones are plastic and they don't have that big box on them and the big box or big bed is what I was after so I'd like to say it would be nice if it had the electric over hydraulic ram I think it's electric over hydraulic maybe it's just an electric screw ram for tilting the bed but other than that that's the only thing I really don't like about it I can tolerate the having to use a choke almost every time to start it but otherwise that's it so hopefully uh, that was a good enough overview for you guys that requested otherwise like I say if there's any questions or comments feel free to send them to me and I will try and answer what I can so anyways thanks for watching comment rate subscribe stay tuned for more and as always I will catch you on the next one